I've just come into the backyard and um, just opened the gate because if you saw my last video you'll know that the little eggs have hatched, the plover eggs have hatched and they can't actually get out. <laughs> Parents are not happy with me being in the backyard. <clears throat> last time they had babies in the backyard um, the one parent was on the other side of this gate and one parent was over here in the backyard where they hatched so I actually had to because they couldn't get out of the gate through the gate you see like it's all fenced so I had to pick them up carry them through the house but this time I'm just I've just come here and I've opened the gate see there's one of the parents out there so what they want to do is they want to take their babies through the gate. Yes, come and fly right at me. Yes, <laughs> I'll leave you in peace in a minute. <clears throat> so um, yeah, they want to bring the babies out through the gate and over into the distance there. So I'm just going to leave the gate open for a while. And uh, see if they'll take the babies out. Now I'm going to go and see if I can find them really hard to see them so I have to be really careful not to stand on them because they just look like little stones on the ground because they just drop I don't know if I can see them anywhere you've got your eyes open you guys can you see anything look for little brown blobs where are you little brown blobs I'm going to watch where I'm walking though. <clears throat> oh, I see brown blobs. There you go. Can you see the brown blobs? <laughs> yeah, there they are. Let me get behind the light. Get the light. With... Whoops. I know, I know. There's a brown blob. They're gorgeous. They're like little cotton wool balls on toothpicks. They've got long legs. I call them cotton wool balls on toothpicks. They're just gorgeous. There you go. There's your brother and your sister. See, there's one, two, three, and there's four over there. So, unless you're really looking carefully, you can't see them. But anyway, there we go. I'll leave them. Um, the gate's open up there so they've got a bit of a distance to go but their parents will take them all right off you go you guys have a good life g'day guys welcome back I'm playing a game with the Montmartre studio acrylic just trying to get that consistency right with my ratios because normally I'm a one-to-one -one girl, um, either 70-30 or 65-35, but these are a bit thicker. So I'm going 60 parts glue, 40 parts water. So 600 grams of glue to 400 grams of water, 6 ounces of glue, 4 ounces of water, and then I've mixed them one-to-one. -one. All of them except the white. The white was a bit thin. I had to add an extra big dollop of white paint. But it's it's feeling good. My mound is good. Want me to show you? You always like to see this, don't you? Okay, here we go. See, it's leaving a mound on a mound, like a wriggle. Doesn't just drop straight down, leaves a little mound. There we go. So that's it today. My ladder's squeaky. I need to get some spray up, shouldn't I, and spray it. All right, so um, I'm still going with the blues and greens because I've, I only bought um, black, white, blue, green, and turquoise. That's all I bought, just to try them. So I'm mixing shades, trying to get different colours. Um, I did order more paints today, so when they come, I can make up a whole heap of other colors so I'm using my treadmill uh, spot on 
lubricant, 100% silicone. Uh, just put in three drops in each. I won't do the, the white. I tend to not really do the white or the black, only because they're opaque. One day I'm going to start doing it in all of them. I'll do two, like two drops in all of them except three in some. Give it a good stir. So I can feel already that it's thicker. I started off, I think, 70-30, I think was my first video. Um, it was a bit thick. I've, I've scraped that one. And then I did 65, I don't know why I stirred that. It's got no oil in it. But I did 65-35. Um, and then I added water to it and it was way too thin. But it's still a pretty pour. Oh, it feels a touch thick. I'm just going to add a splash of water. It's because it's got black in it. This is my blue with a bit of black. And whenever I put black into something, it's always a little bit thicker because the black is such a thick paint. They're never going to be exact. Like this turquoise is a little bit on the thin side. I can feel it's a little bit different. And this one, well... It's about the same as the, the navy. It's as close as I can get them at the moment. I'm, as I said, I'm trying for one to one. Right, let's start layering. And I'll just do two layers in each of the cups. So I've got a dark bluey green. And then I've got this turquoise and then I've got the navy that I made with my blue and a dash of black. The white's just standard and then the green is standard. I think it's called sap green. It's not a very bright green. It's more of a, I don't know, duller green. It's quite pretty. I didn't like it at first but it's <laughs> growing on me. Okay, consistency is feeling good. Now if you layer your paints like this and they drop through into the other colour, then it's too, too thin. They need to be sitting on top. So if yours aren't sitting on top when you do this, it's probably a sign that they're too thin. Although it does depend on how high you're holding your cup as well. Obviously, the higher you hold it, um, the more weight it's going to be dropping in. Oops, what am I doing? How come I've still got some of that left? Um, I'm going to change this up a little bit. What did I just do? Oh, no, I did. I did the green. Now I'm on this one. Oh my gosh, it's because I moved the couple out, out of my eyesight. <laughs> oh, what am I up to? Oh my gosh. Oh, such a deal. Having a good day today. Having a few good pours, which is always a good thing. It's the first day of the school holidays today. Not that I take much attention to that because my kids are no longer in school, but the hospital is always, where I work, is always more quiet during the school holidays. And a lot of the uh, surgeons take time off just to go away with their family during the holidays. Um, and so, you know, not as many surgeons equals not as many patients, not as many surgeries, and not as much work for the nurses. But I do have three shifts this week. I've only got two next week, but three this week. So I've got a couple of extra days to paint, which is lovely because when my new Montmartre paint comes in, I need to spend a whole day mixing new paint colours. Yes, I do. Oh, I've got some of that left. Oh, I just don't know what I'm doing today, do I? I don't know why I've got navy left. Talking too much. I'm not concentrating. 
on what I'm doing. I'm going to put the rest of that navy just into the middle cup. I quite like having the middle sort of section a little bit different. Did I miss a whole navy? No, I couldn't have. Why have I got so much navy left, you guys? I was going to put it into the middle, but I've got heaps left. Did I miss it? No? Oh, I don't know now. It is what it is. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm talking too much. I'm not concentrating on what I'm doing. Right, 30 by 40 centimetre canvas, same as the... It's my one that I tend to use the most for you guys for the videos at 12 by 16 inch. And do you know by now that I need 60 grams, 600 grams of mixed paint, don't you? Uh, 600 grams of mixed paint, what would that be? Who's got a calculator? Uh, 600 divided by 30, I guess it's 20 ounces, isn't it? Yep. 20 ounces of mixed paint. What I do is I times this side by that side in centimetres and then divide it by 2.5 and that gives me roughly the amount of paint that I need. So times that side, that's 30 centimetres. By that one, 40 centimetres. 30 by 40 divided by 2.5 will roughly give me 600 grams of mixed paint. So that's how I do it. Righto. Let's do, I've squished my cup. Let's do this. Wow. I'm always amazed at the colours that come out, I tell you. So pretty. That wasn't a very good pour, Julie. Let's go over here and get some out of the cup. Just let it flow out in the same direction so you've got lines. Don't like go a circle or anything like that. Just keep try and keep what you're pouring in here to be the same. Does that make sense? Put a little bit more here actually. I let the first bit go off the edge just because it's usually a bit blobby. And then just see, just gently continue your lines up. So it's kind of looking as if it's matching in. I just do a little circle and a, a blob, make it look as if it matches with the stripies. That's what I like anyway. Okay, oh these look very pretty. Look at that cell there with the white ring. Oh my gosh. Now, let's turn you around and start covering one side. I keep those little stripies for now. I quite like them. There's plenty of paint, so you can most likely go back and revisit that top section if you need to. I like these colours. Very pretty. Yeah, so you should be able to revisit those um, that side if you need to. So let's torch before we go any further because I do want some tilting to stretch my cells. Now again, don't get too close. I'm going to turn this off because I want to talk to you about torching. Um, don't do this into one area, okay? Can you see that? Don't do that. You're going to get a blast of heat there you're going to get a colony and you're going to get caterpillars. Keep it up at a, oh, probably six inches and just gently go around in circles. Don't do this. You're actually getting down to about that close to the surface. It's not good. 
There we go. <laughs> Keep it up high. Go around in little circles. Don't get too close. Actually, I'm probably more like 12 inches. About a ruler's length away. Now, getting quite high up. I don't want to get too close. I don't want colonies. I don't want caterpillars. Yeah, about a ruler's length away I am between the end of the nozzle and the surface of my painting. Just take your time, you can come back. I've told you guys a million times this, people are still over torching. Don't get it. <laughs> You're getting too close. Too much heat in, at once. This area here, the green, maybe it's the green that was a little bit thick, having trouble getting cells through there. And I don't want to get too close because I no doubt there'll be a caterpillar under there if I get too close. So I may come back to that area later. And same with this blue. There's not a lot happening with that blue. Whoa, I got too close. It's hard to stay concentrated and be the same height. It really is. It takes a bit of practice. But as I said, just rather be further up than too close. Now here I'm just concentrating the heat above the green, but I'm really high up. I'm just staying there for a little bit longer, trying to get the heat to come down. But no, I don't, I don't want to. I'm sure that there'll be caterpillars under there. So just leave it. Um, just under here. It's looking a little bit hazy just there. I just want a few more cells just there. Just because of that white. Oh, look at the green that's popped through. Oh my gosh. Hello, gorgeous green cells. Hello. You are just the cutest. Yes, you are. Okay, having trouble again getting through there. But, whew. Really liking these colours. It's amazing what you can do with just five bottles of paint, hey? <laughs> Mix your colours. These are really pretty. Okay, and the cells are gorgeous. Now, over here is a bit of a colony and a bit of a blob, so I think I'm going to get that off. Before I... I just need the weight of the paint to be in line with that area. There's no point having the weight of the paint way down here if you want this area here to move. Won't happen. Put the paint where you want it to go. All right, I just wanted that blobby thing to go. All right, now I'm going to walk it left, right, left, right. And I'm going to take this corner off here. Oh, look at these colours. Oh, my gosh. Get the weight of the paint moving. I don't want to lose that navy. See that little strip of navy there? I don't want to lose that, so I'm going to stop there. Otherwise, if I take that off, it's just going to be green on the end. So just leave that there. Wow, look at those colours, you guys. <gasps> really enjoying the Mott Mart, what it's doing. I'm trying to open up my middle section, but I can't. See the middle, I have to clean my hands off before I go pointing. See the middle section's quite narrow. Can't move it over. Or if I try and move the paint, it's just going to go off the end there and open that. That's not actually going to open. So I needed to tilt a little bit more paint off at the beginning before I... I started, oh, it looks like a lily pond. It does. 
Now I'm going to try and torch again in this little bit of green up here because that's where I didn't get my cells before. So let's see if we can get a few little cells up now and in that little bit of blue there, a little bit of green just there. green there, a little bit through here, a little bit through there again. So, right oh well, I am really happy. I am ecstatic with that. Love those colours. Oh, it's so nice just doing a painting and going, done. Don't worry about splitting paint. Don't worry about any issues. It's just... You know, with colours over muddying and everything. I need something darker over there. It's just such a relief. <laughs> After all the struggles I've had with splitting paint. Oh dear. So, as far as the... 60-40 goes, 60% glue, 40% water. You know, it's basically the same as doing 65-35, but then adding more water to it. So for me, what I'll do is I'll just make up a big batch of pouring medium at 60-40, and then I know I can just add that one-to-one -one with most of the paints. Not all of them. There still are going to be some, like the white, where you're going to have to add um, more paint. Or with the navy, it's a touch thick and you just think, oh, I just need just a little splash of water. But that's easy to fix. It really is. It's not a drama. So look at that. Oh, I love it. Oh, my gosh. So nice to have a pretty painting. And these ones in here, these cells have grown as you can see. I'll take you down for a close up so you can see the, the rings. Because it's the rings around the cells that we want, isn't it? So pretty. I need to remember what those colours were. Look at that navy stripe through there and through there. It just draws your eye in, doesn't it? And then you've got the paler sections on the back there, on the sides. Okay. Just stunning, I think. Um, and a thinner mix, it really does make a difference to your cells, I think. I used to pour with quite a thick mix, um, but my cells weren't that good now that I've changed to a thinner mix. Um, I'm getting these multi-ringed cells. Cells go down over the edge, look at that. So I've got white rings around these ones. The green looks a little bit yellow through my screen there, but it's not. It's it's green. Beautiful backgrounds, blended nicely. If your mix is too thin, uh, your backgrounds tend to go a little bit muddy because the colours have mixed a bit much. Well, that's the area there that I've got a little bit too close. Got a bit of a cluster happening there. It's not too bad. I lost concentration for a split second. <laughs> um, yeah, the green may have been a little bit thicker because I've had trouble with the green, oh, with the cells popping through. Look at those. Oh, look at those cells there. White ring and then navy 
and then turquoise in the middle. The green ones have got three layers of rings. This is what you're wanting. You're wanting your layers of paint to pop through. Um, and then the silicone brings them up to the surface, brings all the colours with them. If you mix this too thick, the silicone can't bring all those layers up through the through to the surface. So you might just get like blobs of, of colour. Whereas if you have your mix a bit thinner, the silicone oil can do its thing and, and bring lots of layers up and then you get your multi-winged cells. So that's the science of it. Hope it helps. I just love that. Love, love, love. Okay. Thanks for watching. Can't wait for my latest Montmartre paints to arrive. And then I can mix up more colours and purples and some reds and burgundies. And I don't think they do um, metallics though in the big bottles, which is a shame. Okay. Thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.